The Watercress Girl by Henry Mayhew The little watercress girl who gave me the following statement, although only eight years of age, had entirely lost all childish ways, and was indeed, in sorts and manner, a woman. There was something cruelly pathetic in hearing this infant, so young that her features had scarcely formed themselves, talking of the bitterest struggles of life and the calm earnestness of one who had endured them all. I did not know how to talk with her. At first I treated her as a child, speaking on childish subjects, so that I might, by being familiar with her, remove all shyness, and get her to narrate her life freely. I asked her about her toys and her games with her companions, but the look of amazement that answered me soon put an end to any attempt at fun on my part. I then talked to her about the parks, and whether she went to them. The parks, she replied in wonder, where are they? I explained to her, telling her that they were large open places with green grass and tall trees, where beautiful carriages drove about, and people walked for pleasure, and children played. Her eyes brightened up a little as I spoke, and she asked half doubtingly, would they let such as me go there, just to look? All her knowledge seemed to begin and end with watercresses and what they fetched. She knew no more of London than that part which she had seen on her rounds, and believed that no quarter of town was handsomer or pleasanter than it was at Farringdon Market or at Clerkenwell, where she lived. Her little face, pale and thin with privation, was wrinkled where the dimples ought to have been, and she would sigh frequently. When some hot dinner was offered to her, she would not touch it, because if she eat too much, it made her sick, she said, and she wasn't used to meat, only on a Sunday. The poor child, although the weather was severe, was dressed in a thin cotton gown, with a threadbare shawl wrapped around her shoulders. She wore no covering to her head, and the long rusty hair stood out in all directions. When she walked, she shuffled along for fear that the large carpet slippers that served her for shoes would slip off her feet. I go about the streets with water creases, crying, Four bunch of penny, water creases. I'm just eight years old, that's all, and I have a big sister and a brother and a sister younger than I am. On and off, I've been very near a twelve months in the streets. Before that, I had to take care of a baby for my aunt. No, it wasn't heavy, it was only two months old, but I minded it for ever such a time till it could walk. It was a very nice baby, not a very pretty one, but if I touched it under the chin, it would laugh. Before I had the baby, I used to help Mother, who was in the fur trade, and if there was any slits in the fur, I'd sew them up. My mother learned me to needlework and to knit when I was about five. I used to go to school, too, but I wasn't there long. I forgot all about it now. It's such a time ago, and Mother took me away because the master whacked me though the missus usen't to ever touch me. I didn't like him at all. What do you think? He hit me three times ever so hard across the face with his cane, and made me go dancing downstairs. And when Mother saw the marks on my cheek, she went to blow him up, but she couldn't see him. He was afraid. That's why I left school. The creases are so bad now that I haven't been out of them for three days. They're so cold, people won't buy them. When I goes up to them, they say they'll freeze our bellies. Besides, in the market, they won't sell a halfpenny handful now. They're risked to a penny and tuppence. In summer, there's lots, and most as cheap as dirt. But I have to be down at Farringdon Market between four and five, or else I can't get any creases, because everyone almost, especially the Irish, is selling them, and they're picked up so quick. Some of the saleswomen, we never call them ladies, is very kind to us children, and some of them altogether spiteful. The good ones will give you a bunch for nothing, when they're cheap, but the others, cruel ones, if you try to bait them for a farden less than they ask you, will say, go along with you, or no good. I used to go down to market along with another girl, as must be about fourteen, because she does her hair back up. When we've bought a lot, we sit down on a doorstep and ties up the bunches. We never goes home to breakfast till we've sold out, but if it's very late, then I buys a penance of pudding which is very nice with gravy. I don't know hardly one of the people, as goes to Farringdon, to talk to, 
They never speaks to me, so I don't speak to them. We children never play down there, because we're thinking of our living. No people never pities me in the street, excepting one gentleman, and he says, says he, What do you do at so soon in the morning? But he gave me nothing, he only walked away. It's very cold before winter comes on regular, especially getting up in the morning. I get up in the dark by the light of the lamp in the court. When the snow's on the ground, there's no creases. I bears the cold, you must. So I put my hands under my shawl, though it hurts them to take hold of the creases, especially when we take them to the pump to wash them. No, I never see any children crying. It's no use. Sometimes I make a great deal of money. One day I took one shilling sixpence, and the creases cost sixpence. But it isn't often that I get such luck as that. I often I make threepence or fourpence, then one shilling. And then when I'm at work, crying, creases, four bunches of penny, creases, from six in the morning to about ten. What do you mean by mechanics? I don't know what they are. The shop spies most of me. Some of them says, oh, I ain't going to give you a penny for these, and they want them at the same price as I buy them at. I always give mother my money. She's so very good to me. She don't often beat me, but when she do, she don't play with me. She's very poor, and goes out cleaning rooms sometimes. Now she don't work at the firm. I ain't got no father. He's a father-in-law. No mother ain't married again. He's a father-in-law. He grinds scissors, and he's very good to me. No, I don't mean by that what he says kind things to me, for he never hardly speaks. When I get home after selling creases, I stops at home. I puts the room to rights. Mother don't make me do it. I does it myself. I cleans the chairs, so there's only two to clean. I takes a tarp and scrubbing brush and flannel and scrubs the floor. That's what I do three or four times a week. I don't have no dinner. Mother gives me two slices of bread and butter and a cup of tea for breakfast, and then I go till tea and has the same. We has meat of a Sunday, and of course I should like to have it every day. Mother has just the same to eat as we have, but she takes more tea, three cups sometimes. No, I never has no sweet stuff. I never buy none. I don't like it. Sometimes we has a game of honey pots with the girls in the court, but not often. Me and Carrie H. carries the little ends. We plays too at Kiss in the Ring. I knows a good many games, but I don't play at em, cause going out with creases tires me. On a Friday night, too, I go to a Jew's house till eleven o'clock on Saturday night. All I has to do is snuff the candles and poke the fire. You see, they keep their Sabbath then, and they won't touch anything. So they gives me my whittles and one and a half pence, and I does it for em. I have a regular good lot to eat. Supper of Friday night and tea after that, and fried fish of a Saturday morning, and meat for dinner, and tea and supper, and I like it very well. Oh, yes, I've got some toys at home. I've a fireplace and a box of toys, and a knife and fork and two little chairs. The Jews gave them to me, where I go to on a Friday, and that's why I said that they was very kind to me. I never had no doll, but I miss his little sister. She's only two years old. We don't sleep in the same room, for father and mother sleeps with little sister in the one pair, and me and brother and the other sister sleeps in the top room. I always goes to bed at seven, because I have to be up so early. I'm a capital hand at bargaining, but only at buying water creases. They can't take me in. If the woman tries to give me a small handful of creases, I says, I ain't going to have that for a hapers. And I go to the next basket, and so on all round. I know the quantities very well. For a penny I ought to have a full market hand, or as much as I could carry in my arms at one time without spilling. For threepence I has a lapful, and after well about a shilling, and for sixpence I gets as many as crams my basket. I can't read or write, but I knows how many pennies go to a shilling. Why, twelve, of course, but I don't know how many halfpence there is, though there's two to a penny. When I've bought threepence of creases, I, I ties them up into as many little bundles as I can. They must look biggish, or the people won't buy them. Some puffs them out as much as they'll go. All the money I earns, I puts in a club and draws it out to buy clothes with. It's better than spending it in sweet stuff, for them as hairs a living to earn. Besides, it's like a child to care for sugar sticks, and not like one who's got a living and victuals to earn. I ain't a child, and I shan't be a woman till I'm twenty, but I'm past eight, I am. I don't know nothing about what I earns during the year, 
I only know how many pennies goes to a shilling, and two halfpence goes to a penny, and four fardens goes to a penny. I knows, too, how many fardens go to twopence, eight. That's as much as I want to know for the markets.'